Hey guys, it's Tom Cherry Holmes here with another video in the Prob series. I've had two surprises this month. Not only have we been able to successfully take and reverse engineer the Prob PCB, we've been able to basically take and do software emulation. So now the Prob emulation that Bradley Bell and Kurt J. Sampson have been working on has been is all being shored up right now based on the stuff that we've been collaborating back and forth. We now have a uh, we now have a complete schematic of the board and we've got complete KiCad schematics for every single part of the prob. So new PCBs and whatnot can be made. And so in addition to all of that, now uh, out of the blue. We had uh, a member of main dev suddenly tapped me on the shoulder and in an Atari H thread saying that, uh, well, he emulated the frob inside MAME. And he did this as sort of a side effect, taking the Atari 2600 and putting it in as an expansion for the emulated Apple II as well. So the two run side by side in a nice self-contained unit. If you want to grab this, the link is actually in the description here, but you have to be sure this is A, this is a fork of MAME, and then B, it's in this branch called FROB which by the time you see this, it might have already propagated to master, but I don't know when that will be. So as of right now, this is third Tuesday, April 15th, 2025, also known as tax day in the United States. Mm. Um, this is currently sitting off in its own little corner here, but you can grab this, you can grab the appropriate ROMs from places I will not mention, and you can have a nice emulated uh, environment for testing out FROB functionality without having the card. And to do that here, we're going to take an instantiate I took, I've taken and built it and compiled it and made a debug version of MAME so I can open up the MAME debugger, although I don't think we'll use it here, uh, and run it in a window here. And I'm going to put this in an Apple 2E and uh, slot one is going to contain our FROB card, but you can put this in any of the available slots. It doesn't matter, the software doesn't care. And I'm gonna take and put my Prodos FROB floppy in the primary floppy drive here. Now you're gonna hear a little bit of a squeak here. Uh, we'll just simply take and turn off, the, turn off the desktop audio here a little bit. Actually, I'll go ahead and do that so we don't hear Okay, so now this boots up. In fact, let's go ahead and just turn that down a little bit. Sorry, I had to fumble around for a moment to remember the main combination for the key codes here. We're just gonna take and turn that down. And, oop, I reset it by accident. Yeah, there we go. And we will continue on with our merry way here. Now, I'm gonna take as our first little test, of course, and we're gonna load the Explorer program here, kind of like I did in my first videos here, except this is gonna be happening under Prodos. <clears throat> okay, so this loads here as expected. We're gonna go ahead and enter in the prop slot number, number one, and it's gonna load the other side of the equation here. And you may have seen there's a little bit of, uh, a little dash of uh, some prop messages here as you see PMove taking and moving the code into each prop page here, flipping back to page zero. Let's turn on the DCS and hit return. So I'll go ahead and power cycle the DCS and give it a moment to reset itself, okay. One little console reset later, and we're inside the Prob Explorer. So the Explorer is running on the VCS, and the control program is running over here on the left-hand side on the Apple II. And of course, I can take and go through and change individual uh, registers. I'll take and go, for example, set the background color like we did before, and any changes that I make are instantly reflected and so on and so on. So all this is working as expected. So, so far so good. 
you can see that the read and write are working correctly because we see the read down here on the bottom here is incrementing up and the explore program is periodically updating that particular register uh, that particular p uh, location in ram which is location 81 here and you can change this to any other location to get other things going on oops anyway so that's working let's go ahead and just uh, reset out of that okay fine but here's the other twist uh, currently there's a hardware fault on my frob which is preventing the uh, monitor from working correctly but the monitor actually works fine here so we'll take and run amon here Oop. or not I'll just here we'll do we'll just uh, six control T and reboot here because I think it's because I left everything kind of in a precarious state. No big deal. Let's just rerun and we'll rerun aim on here. Aim on takes a minute to load because it has to take and uh, load a whole bunch of control stuff. Okay, great. Fine. Now slot number one. We wish to load a file and I brought a copy of the game that I'm actually in the process of writing right now. I'm still doing kernel work. This embargo will load that at F000, so we have to place it there. The other thing too is that it needs to know that the monitor needs to know uh, the address location so that it can do some flight of hand for shadow locations if we modify BROM locations to take and figure out what to track to bring back over to the problem done. So do you wish to use FMON? Yes, I do. And once again, we hit a point where it's like, okay, please turn on the VCS and hit return. Now at this point, it has uh, shifted away control and thrown thrown it back because we've now changed a couple of things on the VCS. Okay, no problem. Um, setting up, have to find the reset key every time. And of course, now I can, of course, look at ROM locations just fine. And I can take and dump and, and dump ROM locations. <clears throat> that works pretty much as expected. Okay, uh, what was not working for me was the reading and writing of RAM locations or register locations, or locations that were actually on the VCS. So now when I do that, we can see that 80 is of course set to zero here. And to prove that this is actually working here, I'm gonna take and set the VSync register, which will blank the screen. We'll use Oh, now yeah, they're, they're interpreted that as zero anyway. So there we go. We're now communicating back and forth with the screen here. And I'll go ahead kind of as a last little thing here. We will take and 0019 and I will zero that out real quick. 0017. Uh, all right, 0015. And we will bring back up the, hold on, bring back up my, just, yeah, here we go. Ding, 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 ding. We'll take and turn the, turn this back up as a final thing here. Okay. We will change our volume registers here. So. So now that has happened, 0017, we'll change that to like here, okay. Oop, all right. <laughs> Volume control. But you can see, yeah, the monitor is working as expected. I'll take and mute that now. But there we go. So uh, this is actually viable as a means for debugging. I'll take and turn 0019. We'll take and set that back to zero. And since I have embargo loaded, I'll just take and start the game here so that we can see, yeah. Indeed, it is actually working. And breakpoints actually work too as well. But I'll show that in my in-depth video here. 
I want to go ahead and cap this off because we're at 10 minutes right now. But just showing that, yeah, this is actually working. And they, and they did such a great job here. So um, until next time, guys, have fun.